What's up, YouTube? I am back. Thank you for watching all of the other videos. Still working on my short film. Uh, today was kind of a weird day. I had a little bit more downtime than I would have liked, but it gave me a chance to just do what I do, which is think. And um, I've been wanting to put up another little vlog and just talk with you guys, and I really hope I'm not boring you guys. Um, but it seems to be 50 or 60 people that check it out. Check it out every time, so I kind of feel like, starting to feel like, I'm reaching a much broader audience than if I was to just call my roommate into the room and talk with him or pick up the phone, you know. Uh, I um, would love to get more feedback. See what you guys are thinking. See where your brain waves lead you. Um, anyway, I'm here for a specific reason, and that is to talk to you about a short film I saw. And in case you haven't seen it, you really should. It's called Turbo. T-U-R-B-O. Sorry, I'm looking at the film as I do this. I discovered it about uh, Saturday, last Saturday, right after I dropped my music video here on YouTube. And, you know, I was just researching stuff to see what was out there. I go on to Vimeo, don't tell YouTube I'm cheating on her. And uh, it was on the front page. And I saw it and I was like, you know what, let me give this a try because Vimeo just tends to seem like, I, it, it comes across to me as a filmmaker's um, uh, YouTube. You know, it's where people who, who discuss formats and you know high definition versus standard definition all of that video jargon that's where they go and that's where they go to show off their craft um, I was thoroughly impressed with the film I, I watched the entire thing that evening I think I'm gonna watch uh, the second half uh, twice I showed it to my roommates I showed it to Ter Terrence my boy uh, I showed it to just about anybody that came over because it got me excited it was better than most of the stuff you see in theaters today, and it's only half an hour long, and it was free. It was free. I know it was shot with the red one, and I think they put about $100,000 into this short film. That was a shocker to me, that, uh, that the film cost that much. But I guess post-production of uh, that level, I mean, the special effects were really grade A. So go see it. I mean, it's a five-star movie. The writing was great. The casting was great. I mean, I ended up going and re researching everybody who was in the film because I was just so intrigued by these young actors and, 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 and how well of a job they did. I wanted to see if, you know, maybe they were like the character. I think there's a young lady in there that really impressed me. Um, she's from Australia, you know, African, not African-American girl, but a black girl who was from Australia and had the accent. I wasn't sure if she was just acting the accent or if it was actually hers, but either way, he credit to this filmmaker for picking people that were just original you know and then putting uh, an Asian man as your lead that needs to be done more often like filmmakers need to take a little bit of a hint from from Jarrett and put put more blacks as your leads put more Hispanics as your leads put more more Asians as your leads we're not that bad we can be entertaining and in this film they show that it revolves around a, uh, a Asian family and I couldn't take my eyes off of it the entire time. So credit to him for that. Um, special effects, once again, were great. Um, I actually wished there was more to the movie. I kind of almost, uh, you ever get hungry and you go to the fridge and you see there's nothing to eat? So you go back to your room and you're still hungry, so you go and check the fridge that you just checked five minutes ago, hoping that there's something there that maybe you missed. That's how it was with this movie. Like, I kept going back to the channel and the website and just seeing if there was some behind-the-scenes footage or whatever that I could watch because it left me thirsty for more. And hopefully they get, like, a TV series or they get a feature-length movie out of this because I feel like their, their effort deserves it. That cast deserves it. They're unknowns, but we need more unknowns. I'm tired of seeing Vince Vaughn every weekend. I'm tired of seeing Brad Pitt every weekend, as great as they are. I wish we can take it back to the 80s where you can just have like young actors come out of nowhere every once in a while. Even if it's just for one picture, give them a chance. Um, uh, Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon is the perfect example. You know, big, big theatrical release film and guess what? Had an actor in it that was the lead that no one had ever seen before. They picked the guy off the street, taught him how to act, showed off his natural abilities very, very well and there you go, you got a cult classic. I mean, who knows how much money that made, m that movie has made in the past two decades, two and a half decades. And rightfully so, because it was great. Uh, the 70s, you know, brought about, like, uh, Stallone, Schwarzenegger. You're giving new people a chance. The 90s, Quentin Tarantino busted out. Uh, John Travolta came back. I mean, 
this is an age where we really need to start giving other people opportunities, and, and we just don't. Hollywood is locked off to a lot of people, and, 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 and unfortunately, phenotype has something to do with it. So um, check out Turbo. They're really breaking some ground with it. I, I thoroughly endorse it, and uh, yeah, check out Turbo.